Back to Tips and Time Savers. I'm Danny Rocks. In today's lesson, we'll continue to explore the future value function, the FV function in Excel. In this lesson, I'll show you how to use the future value function to track the growth of your investment over a period of years. Then I'll create a line chart so that we can visually see how our investment is growing. Finally, I'll show you an intriguing way to use the Goal Seek feature of Excel. We'll actually drag on the data series in our chart and point it to the goal that we want to achieve with our investments. Let's begin. On this worksheet, we are looking at the fixed interest rate that we will receive. The FV function does require a fixed, not a variable, interest rate over the period that it's going to track future value function also requires a steady stream of constant investment value. So $5,000 will be contributed once a year earning 5%. What will be our investment value, our future value at each year? So I've represented the years over here in column A. Let's begin. Equals FV left parentheses. And at this point, I like to use the keyboard shortcut control A to bring up the function arguments dialog box. Three required arguments, rate and per and payment. The rate is the 5% interest rate. It's an annual rate. The number of payments, the N per, is going to refer to the total number of periods. In this case, we're going to refer to the years. So I'm going to highlight the first of the years. For the payment, this will be our contribution. This will be cell B5. Those are the three required arguments. Let's also fill in the two optional arguments. The present value of our investment, at this period, we haven't started with a nest egg. We've not started with an initial amount. So I'm going to point to our initial contribution, which in this case is zero. And the type refers to when we actually make the contribution. One, which I'm pointing to in cell B7, means that our contribution will be at the beginning of the period, the beginning of the year. If I left this blank, Excel would supply a zero and say you are making the contribution at the end of the period, the end of the year. Now remember, we're going to be copying this formula down the cells in column B. So certain of our arguments are going to be uh, fixed in place. They require us to make them an absolute cell reference. The interest rate, I'll make an absolute cell reference by using the keyboard shortcut F4 to supply the dollar sign to freeze the column, column B, and a dollar sign to freeze the row, row 3. We're freezing that cell with an absolute cell reference. The N per will be the number of years. That we want to keep relative. The other arguments also need to be made absolute. So let's use the F4 shortcut to supply the dollar signs. OK, we're ready to go. Click OK. And now let's copy this down. Our investment will be worth $66,033.94 at the end of 10 years. Let's convert these into positive values. Here's how we can do it. Up here in the formula bar, let's insert a minus sign between the equals and the name of our function. And now let's just copy that down so that our investment is returned at a positive value. OK, now let's create a chart. Over here, I've created a chart of our investment range. And I've created it as a line chart over here. Notice that when I click in the chart, that the area that is charted over here is our future value table. I did leave blank cell A9. I didn't want to have the label over there. I didn't want to have that label year appear down here in the category. So I left that blank. Now, I'm going to do a couple of things over here. I'm going to show you how we actually format at the axis values to have a different format look. Let's right click, look at the format axis, and for the number format, I chose a custom format. This is the custom format that I use to return the value with the K after that to represent thousands. So the pound sign, comma, pound sign, pound sign, zero, comma, K gave me this format. I also made one other choice over here on the format axis. 
on the scale rather than keeping the maximum value automatic based upon our calculations I chose to put in $85,000 I overrode the automatic click OK now let's show you how we can use goal seek in an interesting way inside the chart I first select the data series to highlight the data series next I'm going to actually drag our data series to a new goal so I'll click the second time and now I'm going to drag it upwards let's get close to eighty thousand dollars we're close there all right and now we have our goal seek dialog box let's just edit this we'll make it eighty thousand and that means that 80,000 will be returned in our set cell, cell B10. What do we want to change? Let's change the amount of money we invest each year. So I'll point to one of the cells in our formula, click OK, click OK. And now our chart has redrawn. Our table of copied formulas has changed, showing me to reach $80,000 at the end of 10 years at 5%. I must increase my contribution to six thousand rather than five thousand or my new contribution is six thousand and fifty seven dollars well there you have it so we've shown you how to use future values to track the growth of your investment create a line chart to visually represent those values and then we dragged on our charts data series to incorporate goal seek we'll see you in the next tips and time savers